It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Tennessee Titans and the Cincinnati Bengals next on Madden Football. It's the NFL on EA Sports as we welcome you into Paycor Stadium on the riverfront here in Cincinnati. Today we've got a fun little clash in the AFC as it'll be the Tennessee Titans taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Up in the booth with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and kick off straight ahead, CD. What's one thing that you're going to have your eye on? I think about what the great coaches of the past always said, the key to any ball game. Can you rush theirs and protect yours? Well, in this case, both of these teams get after the quarterbacks. I'm watching the pass rush. set to go Evan McPherson to do the honors and we are underway from Cincinnati and he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21 yard line so here are the Titans now for their first drive and they will be led out by their rookie quarterback I tell you what when he is on schedule for that week secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap a truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. Levis going to the air right away. A short throw taken in by Conquo. He'll wind up getting a yard on the game's first play at second down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. From the 22 now, here's the second down and nine. Levis. That's complete to Traylon Burks. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. to mark him down at the 39. It'll be a gain of 16 for number 16. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now a first carry for Derrick Henry. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. Levis is throwing his on target to Burks. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Give the rookie another one on this opening drive and a first down with it. A nice start, Charles, for the first-year passer. He's come out, made a few plays, nice plays to begin this contest. He certainly has, and if he finishes off this drive with a touchdown pass, I vote we don't call him rookie anymore. We'll move him right to veteran and continue from there. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Offense was moving them a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they're in a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Back to the ground now, it's Henry. And down to the 44, five yards that time. He had to fight for every yard on that run. Shook himself free of a tackle and kept fighting, even with the rest of the defense closing in on him. That's the kind of effort you'll take every single time. 
Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Levis looking to throw. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 32-yard line. The third down conversion is successful. Give them 12 yards that time. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely. As one of the better coaches in the league always tells me, on offense, I want their body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping to run uppercut. We'll take care of the end of this drive. And he has met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Tackled there by Jordan Battle. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because, really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Meanwhile, Levis' throw pulled in by Hopkins. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. The Titans efficient passing on this drive. There's another first down. Well, this is what you want to see from your rookie quarterback on an opening drive, Charles. He looks cool. He looks calm. He looks collected in marching them down the field. And, Brandon, I just think the game continues to change and evolve because we're calling these guys rookies. But, you know, they've thrown the football so much at a younger level now. Way more so than what we saw when guys came into the league when you and I came through. And also, just the way in particular to him, Charles, how he handles himself in meetings, just so professional, mature. Looks like he's been in the league five years. Yeah, he cares about the game. He cares about his performance, and it's showing. Got his man, a Conquero. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. We're scoreless after one. Second quarter now, Titans in possession of the football as they've got it with a third down coming up. Levis to throw once more. And yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. Folks, kick is good, and the Titans hit the scoreboard first. It's three to nothing. So our initial drive this afternoon results in three. Not sure that that's a statement necessarily, but getting points on the road, never a bad thing. You're exactly right about that. I love how you framed it, right? Not sure it's a statement, but at the same time, you're putting something out there, aren't you? Letting them know, hey, we came to play today. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Here are the Bengals on offense, and here is Joe Burrow ready to lead them at quarterback. And the first possession isn't until the second quarter, but what's nice about it, it's only down three. So what you sell your team on is, look, one possession, one drive, we put it in the end zone. We're in the lead in this game. Let's go, guys. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10 at their own 24. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure you're back. You spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300 plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. On second down, here's Burrow. And that is incomplete. A lot of 
force Barron down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as he's able to get eight yards there on third and five. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. That's complete to the tight end sample. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. So the completion good for just three. And it'll be second down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Right when you see the grass or the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. 23 yards to pick up there. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. Burrow's throw caught by Higgins. And he's got a first down as he's going to be taken down. But a very nice pick up there just in front of the two of the early. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. And this is caught at the end. Touchdown, Bengals. Drew Sample, a 20-yard touchdown. And the Bengals have taken the lead. And there's a situation where it's a tight end. Once he gets that end zone in his sights, he's not going to back down from anyone. He doesn't worry about running to daylight. He doesn't mind running through contact. That's totally fine by him. Evan McPherson for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. So this drive spans seven plays, and it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked out officially at the 21. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. First and ten, it's Levis. That pass taken in by Burks. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. 19 yards there on the catch and run. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Levis to throw on first and 10 here. He finds his man complete. It's Phillips. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. First down now, but that clock rolling. Here's Levis. 
That's to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Now Levis. And brought in downfield by Burks. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 27-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. So it looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. Second and ten now from the 27. Levis to throw it. Touchdown, Tennessee. DeAndre Hopkins, 27 yards. And the Titans will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. He put quite a bit of air underneath that touchdown pass. Of course, we knew that he had the strong arm. That part was easy. You could see that throughout his college career. But what you want to know about a rookie is when the pressure's on, can you throw with touch? He just did right there. And boy, it was pretty. Extra point up and good by Folk. And the lead is now 10 to 7. A drive that time of six plays. And it's finished off by the touchdown from DeAndre Hopkins. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The Bengals going to take over late in this first half. A slim deficit here in a one possession game. Not much time left, obviously. We'll see if they can march this down the field, at least get three and take some momentum into the locker room. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. Now it's Burrow. This goes out wide for Nixon. So he'll be stopped here for no gain. And it's second down. That's a nice job defensively to make sure everyone was accounted for because ordinarily you pick up the guys downfield and sometimes you forget about the running back. In this case, they did not and dropped him for no gain. Final play of the half for Burrow and company. Over the middle, that's caught by Chase. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, back to you too in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. This one's been as good as advertised. Just a field goal separating these two teams. This is a very level first half, and I'd expect to see more of the same after the break. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far.
A good tight football game thus far. 10-7 the score as we resume action on EA Sports. And this will not be returned, so the second half begins with a touchback. The Bengal offense ready to go to begin this third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. and They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. I know it was a game, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling, held it to an okay game. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. It's a Bengal first down, a pickup of 11. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And he's brought down. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 43. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. He'll be stopped at the 35, but not before he picks up seven yards. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Now second and three. Once again, they run with Mixon. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. Now they need two. Here's third down. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Steps away to his left. Burrow on his toes that time as they get the first down. He's been patient this entire game, waiting for the perfect moment to surprise him with a quarterback keeper. There he catches him off guard and converts his first rush of the game into a first down. Got to love that efficiency. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. Meanwhile, Burrow's throw taken in here by Chase. And he's going to have a gain of 11 to the 11 before he's brought down first and 10. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far in this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. Mixon with a first down carry. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Now, that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch pass. And he takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Bengals. Taking it in from two yards. Out. And the Bengals have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. And that drive we just saw that culminated in a touchdown, exactly what many offenses are looking for. Sustained ones that can impose their will on the other team. And McPherson on for the extra point. And that makes it 14-10. 
And so that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. Fights forward at the 20. And he will be taken down here on the return on what will wind up being the final play of this third quarter. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. It's Titan football here as they trail to begin the fourth quarter. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. And now they'll look to answer working from behind. And remember, this offense has sputtered yet to score here in the second half. They'll need to change that here. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. Well, definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Again, it's Henry. And they're going to stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. Brandon, you're a big lover of music. How about what you just saw there? This is what I call playing the piano for a defensive lineman. The ability to move laterally up and down the line of scrimmage. How about the way he just flowed and got to the outside part of the field and made that play? Back to throw. It's Levis. And he'll be taken down. The Clemson product, D.J. Reader, got in for the sack. And you hate to say it for the rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has. But in his defense, he hasn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense. I got it. Yeah. See what I did there? Yeah. He needs better protection, that's for sure. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and we watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Corner down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one score game. So the Titans in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here of what could be their final drive. And now here's a deep shot that's complete. Oh, and this is a touchdown or bust drive, and that will definitely help their cause. What a time to come up with a play like that. And now, plenty of time to try and finish this drive in the end zone and take the lead. Here we go. First and goal. Henry. Oh, he's going absolutely nowhere as he is hit behind the line. There's no question that coming into this game, this defense is pretty vocal about his desire to take this running back out of his game. And all that pregame wolfing has turned into results. Now from the seven, here's second and goal. Levis, he'll look to throw it. Escaping the pressure right. He takes it across for the touchdown, and they've taken the lead late in the final minute of the fourth. Wow, wow.
What a game this has been, and what a drive that was, Charles, to take the lead here late in the fourth quarter. And, partner, that's a job well done by everyone, from the players to the guys calling the plays. And if I may introduce just one downside to the mix, might be a little bit too much time left. Enough on the clock for a final last-ditch effort to try and steal this win away. Wow, a personal foul at this stage in the fourth. Hard to believe. Really hard to believe. And now that glow of hope that you had begins to flicker out, doesn't it? Yep. After the roughing penalty on the PAT, they'll kick off from 15 yards further upfield. So Burrow and the Bengals down 17-14, a little over 50 seconds remaining. Now they need, at minimum, three points out of this as they come up first and 10. Here's Burrow. Connecting with Mixon. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six. Second and six coming up. Now Burrow. And that's going to be caught. T. Higgins. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 seconds to go in the game. Two timeouts still available in this final minute. It's first and 10 now. Burrow. And that one complete once again to Higgins. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds remaining. They'll come up first and 10 here. Burrow. And oh, that one nearly intercepted. That would have sealed it. Instead, it'll be second down. Ooh, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle. So they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Throwing, Burrow, he's got room to roam, and down to the seven-yard line. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical, they've been crisp, and as a reward, they're going to be set up with an early first and goal. Now first and goal. And now the timeout call. So five seconds left. And a field goal would send us to overtime. This is your game, baby. Come on, wait for nobody else to make it. Let's be smart. Let's play ball. They can't stop us. It's showtime, baby. Let's go, man. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. So a pressure spot here for Evan McPherson. This to potentially send us to overtime. And this one is right through. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. I 
tell you, the life of a kicker. He has not been called on the entire game. He's over there by the net, but they send him out here in the fourth quarter and say, hey, go tie the game, will you? And guess what? He comes through. I just don't know how they do it. I really don't. These cats are a different breed from you and me. That's a pressure kick, but that one was never in doubt. So overtime on the horizon, barring a wild finish here as the kick's away. So four quarters wasn't enough, and we are off to overtime. Don't change that dime. So it's the Titans who will control the football first here in overtime as we're back underway. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. Well, certainly they'd rather have the scenario they had last time. Now, Charles, remember they had the short field. They took it in the end zone. Now this is going to have to be a longer, more sustained drive if they want to get points. Yeah, a little bit more of a quick strike opportunity last time by where they were on the field, and you're exactly right about that. But now, backed up a little bit. What's that old expression we love to use? Time to matriculate the ball down the field and try and do it again. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. Short gain there to start overtime. Almost a tester play, wasn't it? Wanted to see if the guys on defense were going to fit the gaps the correct way because we're in overtime. So it's not just physical tiredness out there, right? Mentally, are you still doing what you're supposed to do? And they were up to the task on that play. There's certainly fatigue on both sides of the football. And a second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Part of what we're seeing so far is the defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw it through contact and short of the sticks. Levis on third down. He's going to sling this deep downfield. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. The temptation to go for it probably there always is, especially in overtime. Got it, though. I think you're right. I think that you absolutely have to punt it away and trust your defense, especially put a little field position here. But you're so right about the temptation. Another way to satisfy that, though, line up in punt formation and fake it. That's another way to get it done. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The Bengals set to take over. Well, their defense did the job, got off the field without giving up any points. And now, Charles, all they need here is a field goal, and they get the victory. Yeah, and this is the way I love overtime. I'm one of those really, really old school guys that like sudden death right from the beginning. Well, we've got it now because any points wins the game. On defense, get a safety, a pick six, fumble return. You can win it as well. So I'm really looking forward to this series and see how both sides play it. The Burroughs throw it into the hands of Boyd. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. First play of the drive, going for 14 and also going for a first down. Well, this defense certainly knows they're going to have their hands full trying to slow down this passing game. Here's an example on the very first play from scrimmage. I think we'll see some different looks, maybe some pressure from different places, but it didn't work there, and it's a quick first down. Now Burrow on first down. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. Drew Sample, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Oh, 
Burrow will throw. He'll find his running back, Joe Mixon. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one, a gain of 20 in a first down. We often talk about understanding the playbook, understanding progressions, and understanding what the defense is doing. We saw all of that on that play. Great recognition and understood where his running back was going to be. Found a way to have him leak out underneath, hit him with the football, and they picked up the first down. Burrow's throw going to be caught by Boyd. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Second down at six now from the 42. Out of the shotgun, they run with Mixon. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. I would think as a play caller, you want to look for some quick hitters to your tight end. Any type of a route to replace where that linebacker was. Because when you saw the speed with which he reacted and stuffed that play, maybe use that speed against him in the future. And now on third down, they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first. To throw Burrow out to the left. He's got Sample there. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 32-yard line. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive. And here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They go play action with Burrow. That's going to be brought in by Higgins. And he will reach the eight-yard line before going out. A lot of efficiency here on this drive. That, this may be their best drive of the game. If they moved it like this throughout the entire game, we probably wouldn't be here in overtime. But right now, what you just said was the key word, efficiency. Taking care of the ball, move it downfield, get themselves in a position to score and win this game. Now Burrow. Intercepted. Picked up by Kevin Farley. And the Titans are going to have it with a chance to win the game here in overtime. Both offenses sputtering a little bit here in overtime, Charles. But give credit to the defenses and certainly credit to them on that last play. That is a huge interception. I will absolutely do that. They deserve the credit because they forced a punt on the opening drive of overtime. You know no one wants to give up the ball in OT. And now you have them back out there knowing that it only takes a field goal to win this game. Big time defensive plays being made. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. Well, these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. On second down, here's Henry. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. He was brought down by Jordan Battle. A gain of five. And the Titans first down. Levis to throw. Gets it to Burks. And they'll get him down after a gain of seven, but they'll happily give him that. To number 16, Traylon Burks. A seven-yard pickup. Brings up second and three at the 38-yard line. Switch sides and have that second overtime in just a moment. From the 38 now, here's second down and three. Inside handoff, Henry. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. 
If they're going to get a first down out of this, they're going to have to earn it because there's been tough going in the interior there. And here we are on third and one. Be prepared. Brace yourself. Could be some contact going on. Heavy set out there on third and one. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. Move the chains, a gain of seven on third down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. A couple of first downs on the drive already. As they'll go from the 47 now on first down. They'll run it again with Henry. And some solid footwork there as he'll take this down to about the 38. 54 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. Partner, this is a pretty good drive they're putting together. And I know if I'm on the other sideline, that offense, kind of helpless, isn't it? Because they may not touch the football at all because they go down and score a touchdown. This thing's over. Absolutely. That would write an ending to this script. We'll see what happens. First and 10, it's Levis. Eluding the pressure right. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. Had met a quarterback yet that didn't enter the league with a massive chip on his shoulder. If he wasn't a first-round pick, they want to show the league that they made a big mistake. Determined to get the first down there. No hesitation at all to tuck it and go. I bet he would have tried to run through their entire defense if it meant reaching that marker. Now they'll fake the jet sweep and run up the middle with Henry. And a missed tackle there as he pushes forward for a gain of four. Overtime with two minutes to play. We are in sudden death, but still all tied up. So here now is the kicker, Nick Folk. This to win it in overtime. And now the Bengals are going to call another timeout. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. And now this game's going to come down to the right leg of their kicker. He hit his first, this one from 40 yards out. And he got it! The kick is good! And they have won it here in double overtime! And for the visitors, it is going to be a happy flight home. It is always such a treat, Charles, in the NFL when you can go on the road and get a victory, and that's exactly what they accomplished here today. Oh, the trip home so much sweeter, isn't it? All the noise they heard before, how tough it is to win on the road, how tough it is to play in this stadium, how hyped up that crowd's going to be. They just used it as fuel. Came in.